Hi gang, let's work through our section 3.6 notes. We are going to be talking about the chain rule. The chain rule is um, what we call taking the derivative of um, bigger and better functions. Um, it's just going to give you more power in your derivative taking. Um, the chain rule is um, if you have a composition. So let's read through this here. If f and g are both differentiable and capital F is equal to f of g, fog, is the composite function defined by f of g of x. You have seen this notation, fog, back in pre-calculus. We have seen this um, also f of g of x. Those are the same. Then f is differentiable, and f prime is given by the product of this guy right down here. What I want you to notice is that we are taking the derivative of the f function and we are taking the derivative of the g function. And when we do that, notice that this g of x right here um, is really just copying this g function. We are just going to copy that. So we're going to take the derivative of the outside function green part, the f part, and then we are going to take the derivative of the inside function. And this part right here, this guy just gets copied um, when we do our first derivative. So we only take the derivative of each thing one time. Um, there is also what's called Leibniz notation, which is just an alternative calculus notation. This is, if you Google this, you might see um, this somewhere else. If y equals f of u and u equals g of u are both differentiable functions, that means functions you can take the derivative of, then dy dx, the derivative, is equal to dy over du times du over dx. And basically, this first function, dy du, kind of represents the outside function, and then du is the inside function. Now, we're going to use some trig problems to explain this notation. And the reason that we use trig, I think, is because it um, kind of lays it out for you. When you're looking at a function, you have to identify what is your inside function. And in this case, x squared is inside of your sine function, which makes the sine the outside function. So when we do this, The sine is the outside function, and the x squared is what we would consider our inside function. We always start on the outside and we work in, so the first thing we're going to do is take the derivative of our sine. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative of sine. The derivative of sine is cosine, and we copy the inside function because again, we are only taking the derivative of the outside function and we multiply that times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. So just to pay attention here, the derivative of the x squared was right there. The derivative of the sine was the cosine. And this guy right here is the part that stayed the same um, in our first derivative part there, the derivative of the outside. Let's try it again. Um, on this second question that we have here, it does say bx. I actually, let's change this to y equals the secant of 5x. I think it will make it a little bit more clear. When we do this, again, let's inside, identify the inside and outside functions. The main function that we see there is the secant, and we are, um, then have the 5x as our inside function. Remember, we will be taking the derivative of the secant function, which is secant x tan x. And then we will take the derivative of the 5x function, which is just 5. But we need to remember that that x part is this 5x, and that's the part that's going to stay the same. Right? It doesn't change because we're only taking the derivative of the green part, the secant part. So when we write our derivative, y prime, it will be secant 5x, 
tan 5x. That's the derivative of the secant part. And then we multiply that times the derivative of the 5x part, which is just 5. Oftentimes, we will take that 5 and put it in the front so that it doesn't get multiplied in by mistake. Our derivative is 5 secant 5x tan 5x. All right. Let's do the next function. And this one has a few more layers to it. And again, I am going to take this and I'm going to, instead of that x right there, I'm going to make that a 5x. This is, we're going to, do a triple layer here. So we have the sine squared of 5x. And again, starting on the outside, working our way in, we notice that our first outside derivative, the most outside, is the power. And then we have a sine. And then we have the 5x. So this is going to be a triple layer. When we do this, remember we have to take the derivative of each part. Remember the derivative of a squared would be 2x to the first. The derivative of the sine is going to be the cosine of x. And the derivative of 5x is going to be the 5. But each of these, in those circle spots, that's the part that's going to stay the same. Let's see if we can explain this here. y prime is equal to first the power rule, which would be two sine to the first power of five x. Notice the only thing that changed there was the power rule. Then we're going to take the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine of x, but remember in our x spot, we have that five x. And then we are going to take the derivative of the 5x, which is just a 5. So we did three layers there. We did the green layer, and then we did the yellow layer, and then we did the red layer. Our final answer would be probably to take that 5 and multiply it with that 2. We would write 10 sine of 5x, cosine of 5x. All right, um, we will stop this video here, and then you can come back and do some power rule if you would like it.